So it's been a while since I uploaded the last part of the tutorial, because like most artists, I spend more time ruminating than actually doing anything with my life. But we're back with part three of the hashtag Olivia Hay challenge, and today we'll learn how to draw Olivia's dramatic and distinct eyes. If you give an artist a blank sheet of paper and let them draw anything, aside from drawing a dick, they'll probably draw a set of eyes. In fact, they'll probably draw so many eyes that you end up with some sort of disgusting eye-filled monster like the one from Yu-Gi-Oh! But we're gonna stick with two for today. So it was a bit of a refresher if you missed the last video. Well then you should watch the last video. But if you did watch the last video and you're still unsure, we want to break the eye into a lot of different layers in order to make sure that we can keep things nice and tidy and make sure there's no color bleed from layer to layer. Specifically, I'm going to talk about what layers we used and what order they should go in. So this is going to help to understand the parts of the eye and how it breaks down. So first of all, we have our lashes, which I would put at the top. This is goes on top of everything. Number two would be the eyeliner. Um, you could merge this with lashes, but you don't have to. And under that, I would probably set eye, this whole area of the eye white as its own layer. But the thing is here, there are two things that go on top of the layer. As you can see, there's the pink part of the eye here, the tear duct, which you should all be very familiar with from all your art tears, and the pupil here. So these two kind of go on top of the eye white. These are separate layers. The key here is to make sure that these don't bleed from one layer to the other. How do we do that, you might ask? For example here, I've drawn my eye white here, and I've drawn my pupil here. Let's just make it purple, because purple's cool. If you hit on Windows Control alt g this will make it so your pupil layer doesn't bleed anywhere outside of your eye layer, and therefore you're free to do whatever you want and it won't color outside the lines. I would do this for both the pupil and the tear layer. So moving on, I don't remember what color I was using, but other than that, under the eye white layer, we have a couple things we want to take a look at. So this part under the eye, this eyelid, this lower lid, that's something that needs to go under the eye white layer. Under that we have the fold of the eye here. This is actually very important, especially among Asians because some people don't have them. Think of your sulgis or your... I can't think of anyone else. Anyway, that goes underneath. So here you have your folds. Under that, I would probably leave one layer for the makeup in the surrounding area. As you can see, there's a lot of red around here. So we want to leave another layer for color correcting and things like that. So your final layer loadout is going to look something like this. So that's what, se seven, eight layers. It's a ton of layers, but eyes are pretty complicated. And I think it looks better when you keep them separate. At this point, if you follow the layering instructions directly as I did from the past video, you might notice that some of your layers are blank, namely the lashes and the eye detail. Maybe some other layers. I, I forgot a lot of and that's fine. I think it's just good to know that these have placeholders and to keep conscious of them. So the rest of the video is going to be footage from my Twitch stream where I'll slow things down or maybe stop them to explain additional aspects. So I start with shading a little bit of the face, just using some of the darker colors from where they sit on the picture. This is a, this is optional and you don't have to do it, but I think it helps set the stage a little bit and helps make your drawing look a little bit less creepy as you go along. I mostly just focus on the darkest areas, so things like uh, the under the eyes, near the forehead, kind of the folds of the nose, right above the lips. So here I started with the, uh, the tear duct layer. Think of this as like a triangle that has dark edges on the outside and some white bits on the inside. Just refer to the uh, reference image. I started working on the eye white here, and this is a little bit difficult to get right, but I think it's, you can get with some practice. You want to shade darker in the upper areas, imagine right under the lid. Darker sort of in the areas close to the bottom, kind of near the edges. And you want to get a little bit of light shading in between those areas. Kind of make it look round. Um, it's not a pure white. I think that's really important to note. In this picture, it's a little bit of a greenish blue tint. Um, don't go too light with it. Just make it so there's an obvious color difference. The smudge tool is your best friend if your computer is good enough for this. Next, we're going to talk about the iris or pupil, which is really important. Um, I mostly draw people with darker eyes, so you can kind of get away with some vague shading. It's definitely darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. With blue eyes or lighter eyes, you might need to be a little bit more detailed here. But just think of this as circles, like circles within circles. Obviously, the main pupil area is a dark circle, and there's some light rings that go around it, as you can see here. Don't be afraid to use real black, like 000, pure black, if you need to. Uh, the important part is just getting a little bit of glow in the bottom area. And I add like a couple, uh, couple like light touches there, here and there, too. The next part we're going to do here is like a low shading, some brightness. So take your pen tool, make these kind of crescent moon shapes, as well as these little triangle shapes within the eye. Fill that with like a light gray, like a dark, like a little bit lighter than uh, the eye white. And I would set that to a lower opacity, maybe blur a little bit, smudge a little bit. So I want to stop the video for a second just to go into a little bit more detail about this low shine layer. So as you can see, this is the shade of gray that is similar to the eye level. What we want to do is we want to take this layer and set it to a hard light. 
what this is going to do is it's going to bring really bring out the colors that we painted in the eye. As you can see, this makes it a lot more vibrant, a lot more uh, dramatic. So you probably want to set that to a lower opacity. I have it set to 40 in my image, but you can set it to anything you want. Um, if you were paying attention earlier, you might have noticed that this is actually bleeding off of the edge of the pupil a little bit. Um, so the way we can change that is if we go to the sidebar and we collect like the quick selection tool, this might be the default magic wand, but you want to click the quick select. Go over the pupil, select this whole thing, do this on both eyes, and once you've selected this pupil layer, switch back to the shine low layer, and then hit this layer mask button in the bottom right. What this is going to do is make it so that we kind of have our own like space to draw in and it's not going to color outside the lines. This is similar to the control alt g tool that we discussed a couple minutes ago, but it has its own uses, especially when there's multiple layers that are already tied to another layer. Now at this point the eyes are still looking a little bit lifeless, but this next step is going to change all that. You take a white brush and you just put some dots wherever you kind of feel like. Just follow my pattern if you want to, eventually you'll learn a little bit more about what looks natural and what doesn't. This is going to bring life to eyes and really make or break what you're doing here. All of the other work is kind of irrelevant if you don't get this step right. But luckily it's one of the easiest steps and I think everyone should really do it. At this point I'm just adding an extra bit of shading around the eye whites to make the uh, shadows a little bit more dramatic. It's optional but I think it does help a little bit. Just use a really dark layer or maybe just add to the existing layer. So with that part done you're actually ready to move on to the eyelids here. So I've erased a little bit of that kind of blurred them out because it's not so clear where the direction is in the, uh, the picture. So a little bit darker near the edges, near the insides and the outsides of the eye, and a little bit lighter on the center area. There isn't much to say here, just use a darker kind of brownish red on the dark areas and use a kind of pinkish white on the light areas. The next part is the eye detail around the eyes. Um, I would make sure that you take a little bit more of a reddish tone. Just take some stuff from the reference image, kind of just lay it around liberally, just smudge it around as you need to. The goal here is just to get a bit of a shading and sort of a makeup look that goes around the eyes and gives it some pop, honestly. At this point we'll hit it with a darker color, so sort of a dark reddish brown. And right under the uh, the eye fold, right, right where the eyeliner sits, especially some darkness on the eye that's covered by the hair, slightly covered. Just a little bit of red touch-ups here and there making sure that we have those dark emphases right under the eyeliner and right where the eye fold is. As well as just a general low opacity, like soft red around the eye. You can kind of just put that wherever you want, as I said, and smudge it around until it looks good. Here we're gonna start the eyelashes. So this is pretty simple. Just take a small brush. I have five pixels here, high opacity, just flick of the wrist, kind of what you think eyelashes look like. Make sure that you vary some in terms of like some are longer than others, some are shorter than others, some are probably a little bit thicker or thinner than others. Just give it a little bit of life so it's not all uniform, otherwise it looks like freshly cut grass. I would take a low opacity eraser and kind of just erase the edges to make them look a little bit softer. And I would do the same thing with the bottom lashes. Careful to note that lashes do not actually grow out of your eyeball. Many artists do this and I would hate for you to make the same mistake. You can often flip the canvas to do the other eye because some people are, most people are better at drawing on one side than the other, and that's definitely true for me as well. But again, you're kind of just throwing lashes around. Make them look pretty. Make them look as glamorous, as fabulous as you want. This is your time to shine. Why not? So at this point, I add a slightly warmer color to kind of the bottom side of the lashes near the eyeball because there is some light reflecting off of that. And that gives a little bit more life and a little bit more distinction so it doesn't look like a black mass. And add a little bit of the final touches to the eye detail where there's like some semblance of uh, I guess they call it eye fat. Yeah, that. I add another layer just to add a little bit of light detail. So like nearly white with a very low opacity brush. Just kind of go and add some shiny areas to make it pop, especially in the corner, the inner corners of the eyes and sort of the middle of that eye fold. That's really where it's going to make a difference here. So at the end of it all, you get a nice set of eyes. It's okay if they're not perfect. Everything can be changed later. Once your file gets f***ing corrupt. Art can be intimidating and sometimes I feel the same way. And that's why my name RUM is actually an acronym. Realize you have no talent. Utterly give up all hope. Minimize the pain with alcohol. Anyway, this review was a bit more technical, so props to you if you made it this far. If you like having a little bit more art detail, let me know. If you're just here for more memes, let me know. Twitch Twitter hashtag. And that's all for now. Next we'll do the rest of the face. That's it. Bye.